Oh, I was just, um, reading through this comic book. Were you reading a good story? No. You're listening to The Big Cake. Comics podcasting on the edge of civility. We are wasting so much time watching this shit movie, and we should have been recording an hour ago. And you wanted to see it. You put it... Well, then no, I, I, yeah, It was already in your queue. Let's be fair. And in the interest of getting it over with... <laughs> no, that's Bishop not true at all. I, wanted, I so wanted to see it. I don't understand. We're watching He-Man, kids. <laughs> and this is TMG cast. Bless you. Oh, no, sorry. Wrong end of the show. Uh, trying to end it quickly. <laughs> yeah, that's what Commodore wife was telling me. Oh! Like she's got to rush me. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> Rever- no! <laughs> there you go. Happy birthday. I gave you that one. <laughs> so, Rev. Quack. How's it going? Fun. And you? Right, very good. I'm Who are right. you? I'm the Tech we? Jedi, and this is episode 233 of, like I said, DMG Cast. Tamuggy! Yes, Tamuggy. <clears throat> this is going to be a Marvel show. It's going to be a monstrous 11 issue show. We're going to split the other 11 from this month. Way too many Marvels. Way too many Marvels. But, uh,. I think it's all going to go bye-bye soon. They're doing some weird shit, and I'm not really down with it all. Wait, what? The whole restarting thing, and the, I don't care. There's a lot of number ones floating around. Not certain they're all going to stick. It's a, inevitable at this point. There are so yeah. many number ones of things out there now. And I'm not going to lie, man. What I heard was that they're going to keep all the doubled-up people. And they're going to bring everybody else back. So... Male Thor will have his own book again. Cap will get his own book again. Okay. So it'll just be like... And you know, it occurred to me yesterday thinking about this. Doesn't that sound horrifyingly like separate but equal? A little bit. (laughs) But I I think, you know, once Male Thor and Female Thor get an apartment with a wacky roommate... (laughs) It'll be Thor's company. Oh. Come and knock on my Thor. Oh, my God. Why do you... Oh. Actually, it's really clever. <laughs> That's, you. How long have you been saving that Again, up? no. <laughs> Dude, you are such a fucking liar. I, you stay up nights. <laughs> you have a little notebook. I've seen your little notebook. <laughs> you find a little notebook that has any notes in it you anywhere. Think, you make me think that it's just books you want to go get at the barn. <laughs> Or maybe missing comics here and there. Dude, I you try know, to make me think that. I didn't that. even know Male Thor was coming back. This was entirely, you entirely. Were just, you, that joke could have worked at any other point. And you know yet, it. nope. I am just This that. was just a really opportune moment. Yes, it worked perfectly. <laughs> but uh, I thought of ah, it. So you admit it. I didn't say that. I don't admit that at all. That came up right then and there. <laughs> Some disappointing news from Palmiotti and Connor. What's that? They are uh, strictly limiting their... It's a Balrog. Um, They're strictly limiting their uh, amount of books any one person can do to five. Okay. Which means it's going to take like six more trips to get everything. If they show up to a con I actually go to. Well, I mean, if you think about it, back before... uh... No, I don't blame them for limiting. Because there are people, there are motherfuckers out there. I mean, I got behind a guy for a slot who literally had an 18-inch stack of fucking books to do. Yeah. uh, And that's just fucking rude. You know? I would never bring 18 fucking books for one, inches of books for one sitting. I remember. I'd go back and I'd go back and I'd go back and I'd be fucking get in line again and be fucking fair. Well, you, uh... You've actually mellowed on that a little bit. You bring more than you used to think was acceptable. I've noticed because I remember 
even before we had the podcast, because uh, I was never a con guy and you were. Yeah. You're like, you know, really more than six is just out and out rude. Like, it's it what is. you told me. Yeah. But I've seen you bring nine or ten, depending on my... Like, well, I you mean, do pay some attention, but depending on their scarcity and how friendly they seem, sometimes you're like, oh, here's a couple more. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Jan Sama, it was the beginning of the show. It was literally moments from when the I'm door I'm not opened. judging. I'm just saying, like, your old rules and have kind of You never get... You got to take advantage sometimes. Right. Because... When was the last time you saw her at a con? Um, never. I never go comparatively, but that is the only time I've ever seen her. Yeah, exactly. And I, I want Star Wars books signed. Star Wars books are important to me, even some of the shittier ones. So, you know, I want to fuck her son. <laughs> if, I if I owned more Roy, Roy Thomas, I absolutely would have had more Roy Thomas done. Yeah, I was behind him, and obviously, like, he was incredibly rare and uh, charged. Yeah. But, uh, I was behind somebody who got, like, an insane amount of books. Like, they're yeah, one of those things was... where you... They just you have to go buy them because they take up half the table, putting yeah. their stuff back in plastic and uh-huh. whatnot. And that one guy at Thomas, I, I wanted to smack him. Boy, you remember that? I ain't going back into that. I already told that story no. on the show. Anyhow, so that's all the real news. I oh oh DC is canceling a bunch of stuff. Okay, what? Uh, they're from. I got to look it. I should, ought to should have looked it up a game. Um. Starfire is on the block. Superman, Batman, maybe. A um, couple others that we don't give a shit about. So, Well, I do enjoy Starfire, but I can't say it'll put a giant hole. Well, considering the all the other DCs that I'm not going to bother with anymore, I mean, purposely dropping a bunch and then getting a couple taken away is going to leave us with like four whole fucking books. <laughs> Well, that is true. I mean, we don't have enough DC books as it is, but when they revamp yet again... It would, you know, it would, it would give yet new number ones another goes. Which, I mean, it feels like an abused girlfriend. I mean, <laughs> maybe they'll be good this time! It won't matter because they'll restart that shit. See, I, I type in DC canceling, uh, and I get a whole bunch of things from 2014, ah. 2015. <laughs> DC, all right, here we go. DC comic cancellations, 2016. Yeah. And now it won't load. Motherfucker. <laughs> Oops. I'll fill this in by saying that I've been rewatching Buffy. Oh, yeah? I'm uh, almost done with the second season. Um... Angel has had his soul taken away because he got laid, turning him into a giant douchebag. Just very, call very cool. me Angel in the morn. I've got my soul back. That means I'm a douchebag. Wait, you were better without the soul? No, no, he loses his soul as soon as he has a true moment of happiness. Uh, how did you even remember that? I am shocked that I did, <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, uh, that was the whole thing. Like, yes... Because he, he was a vampire, uh, vampires are demons and whatever, and he had his soul attached to him, which is why he felt bad about all the people. Oh, that's right. That's right. Down had that on. backwards. The second yeah. se- I remember the second season being really good. I have not seen it for years. <laughs> well, that's why I did it. I wanted, you know, I remember enjoying several when they first came around, and I also remember not enjoying them on a second attempt to go through them. So, you know. But um, Charisma Carpenter is a huge straw. So That is a beautiful woman. Yeah. So no list there? That's, I, my phone is being slow. Try yours. Yeah. Um, nah, mine's even worse. I did. I finished watching Gotham, finally. Yes. Your thoughts? I liked it overall. I thought they did a lot of things really well. The Penguin was amazing. Yeah. I, I thought the build-up to the Riddler was surprisingly good when they finally saw him, showed him going nuts and talking to himself in the final. Right. Season ender, I the casting is really strong. There are a couple things I didn't like. It, to me, it was almost like watching uh, Inglorious Bastards. Like suddenly, it just started recreating its own history. Ah, like Maroni yeah. getting shot. Uh, oh, well, if you haven't seen this from last year, like I don't even care if I'm spoiling this for you. Deal with it. <laughs> Fucking I, like everyone watches shit before me, so deal with it. But yeah, they killed off people I didn't expect them to. I thought. Certain things were really well done, like the younger villains being shown. I did not like 
it really bothered me. I thought the Selena Bruce dynamic was really well done. Yeah. And they yeah. had two really strong kid actors, so I could totally see um, adult versions of them being those characters. Sure. So that was super well done. Selena killing a guy and teaming up with Fish. Yeah, that was rough. I was like, no, I don't. First off, I don't see Bruce being okay with this or forgetting about it. Yeah. And then I also don't see, like, Selena just walking around with a shotgun, like, coolest gig ever. Like, <laughs> there are there, there's somewhat questionable moments here and there. Um, Will we see a comic Fish Mooney moment as a result of all this? Almost certainly. Who knows when, though, but well, it'll I mean, probably DC, happen in Detective DC's first. about to revamp to match all the... Yeah, that's true. So it could be sooner than I think. So, um, I found that with Gotham, at, at least, once I figured out to look at it as an Elseworlds... It took some of that away. It was a whole lot easier to do. I can with. see that. Because it's hard to tell sometimes whether a given production is going to be considered, you know, main, original, real, the prime, yeah, no, so to speak. Uh, I can totally see that. But I think, like, the casting's amazing. I like the characterization a lot. And it has, it really does seem to understand DC. Yeah. Uh, the Penguin was, uh, like, ridiculously good. <laughs> right. His, uh, his crazy-ass mom, though, I could have dealt without. I mean... Did Carol she, Kane play his mom in Batman Returns, though? Wasn't it her and Paul Rubens? Or am I making that up? You are making that up. It was definitely Paul Rubens played his dad. In Batman Returns, when, they were, uh, when he falls out of the carriage at the very beginning. That's Pee Wee Herman. Falls out of the carriage? The origin of the penguin in Batman Returns. You said Riddler. No, I was talking about the Penguin. I totally... Check the tape, bitch. I am clear on this. <laughs> uh, We're talking about Carol Kane, so I, I, I really, it had to, we, we had to be talking about the Penguin's mom. Yeah. No, I... Uh, I've seen that movie once in the last eight years. I don't remember. How is that possible? Well, because it's... Batman Returns. You liked Batman Returns. I distinctly remember that. <laughs> I like it better than Batman Forever. You legitimately liked it back in the day. I distinctly... <laughs> it was what we had. Because I did not. And I remember you giving me a hard time. <laughs> you remember better than I do, buddy. Ugh. Whatever. Right. Why don't we get into some books? Okay, what do you got? Well, like I said, we're going we're gonna to do some Thors, or some Marvels. Uh, Come and knock on my thorn. All Yes. All the way back from November. So nobody give us any shit about spoilers. Oh, so, dude. <laughs> like people respond or listen to us. They really don't. Um, so this is Thor number one. The whole new, yet again, Thor number one. Jane starts out in chemo explaining it's pointless since transforming purges her body. Um, I don't know why it would purge it of chemicals and not... Disease because okay. the disease is part of. Her. She actually explains that the disease is part of her body, yeah. so it doesn't disallow that, but it does get rid of anything toxic that's affecting the body. It's a mild stretch, though, because why wouldn't she have the tumor in the new form? If it's part of her, she's an Asgardian god. They don't get tumors; they get stabbed in the face. It's an entirely different. But it gives it back to her. I- well, it doesn't erase it. She's, it's closer to she's transforming, and then she transforms back to her original form. Her original form isn't affected by the transformation any more than the transformation is affected by her original form. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You know, if you go to the gym and you come home and you're sweaty and you put a new shirt on, that new shirt might become sweaty because you're sweaty, <laughs> but it doesn't become sweaty because your old shirt is sweaty. And your old shirt doesn't become clean because you took that shit off. It works as a parallel. All Fuck right. you, it's science. <laughs> that is not science. Um, Volstag is on standby to take her home, which was pretty cool. I like that he's there for the Thor. I like that he's the only one who knows what's going on. Like, 
Well, it's, it, he's a good character, and he should be in a few more things every once in a while. I like they slowly turned him into, like, for years he was the inept comic relief, and now they slowly made him, like, this moral heart and center. Well, I mean, he always had those moments with his family that were always very... Not always. Even that came later, though, if you think. Like, the original Volstagg was just, you know, giant dill hole. <laughs> like, ah, burger! He was, like, wimpy with a sword. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's this weather satellite uh, taking damage as hundreds of dead light oh, elves are dumped him. into orbit by Malekith. Dude, nasty. Which is just harsh as fuck. Man, he just, uh, he just cut. Uh, He-Man cut him. Well, it, it is a sword. Well, now he's Skeletorn. Oh, my God. Stop that. You know. You do that again, you're going to turn this shit off. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Jane hears about it and averts disaster from the satellite. Uh, the Senate of All Realms convenes to charge the Dark Elves... Did that feel vaguely stolen from Star Wars with them bit. all floating in a little... Uh... Teeny bit. Um, Jane eventually talks to the All-Mother and Agar, that idiot from Roxxon, and Malekith uh, plot to bring uh, and bring Loki in on their plot. Yeah, evil Loki is back. How do you feel about that? I'm fine with that. Really? Your love yeah. of young Loki is almost... Um... Yeah, well, there's only... You can't... You can't keep the same character from writer to writer to writer. They, I don't think they have, so they shouldn't. So if, if you can't bring the same characterization you had with Gillen, then fuck it, go ahead and bring back bad guy. Why not? Yeah. It, it all flew, it all, it's been what, seven years? Eight years since Ragnarok? Since he was put into a woman's body? I think yeah. they've had enough playing fuck around with what form he takes for now. I suppose that's true. Everything comes around. It always does. Now it's time for it to come around. Some people... No, that's not entirely true. And I kind of agree with you as well. I, like, I understand it. But some characters do legitimately change and don't go back. Harley Quinn, for example. Yet. She's not likely to, considering her current sales. Right. But uh, Wolverine. Went from um, almost a villain in the beginning, if you think about Hulk. Well, yeah, but... And I, then he was a tiny, sawed-off dick weasel. <laughs> now he's the heart and soul of every comic ever. Yeah, well, there's that, too. So, I... But I think old man Logan, we're going to find that they're, they've flopped him back around again. Because he's on a big revenge trip. But we'll talk about that later. So... I, it was enjoyable enough. I like Thor. Yeah, I mean, I love Jason Aaron on it. Uh, who's the artist on this? This one is uh, Douterman. Uh, an awesome job. Like, I like what they're doing with the character. I, I want Thor back in one sense, but at least <laughs> in this case, Thor's around with his metal arm and his axe. <laughs> Yarn Bjorn. <laughs> That's a crazy-ass axe, man. That thing's monstrous. That's more a cleaver than an axe. Well, if you ask me. Everybody heard that, right? <sighs> I hate you so much. How about Howard? Did you like Howard? Of the course I did. The new Howard number one? With his new sidekick that I don't remember where she came from? Uh, that's his scroll buddy uh, that he ran into in the unemployment line or some ridiculousness. And, I totally don't yeah. remember that. <laughs> it was just the usual inanity. Yeah. So her name is Tara, and she and Howard are road tripping uh, when they encounter a redneck thinks aliens stole his job. <laughs> Aunt May, at some point, has become Howard's secretary and goes to Which Dr. Which beats a bag of trash. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Howard goes to Dr. Strange to get the abundant gloves so they can go home. They end the road trip at the nexus of all realities. Sound familiar? Just a tad. Just a little bit. When Titania and the fucking wizard of all people show up, <laughs> trying to find universes that they can actually be victorious in. <laughs> God damn it, I want to win! <laughs> I have to say, though, like, I don't like this. Like, like, Howard in the regular universe irks me a little bit, but, like, Howard and his Skrull buddy, 
the wizard and Titania should thump them into <laughs> car parts. Like, that's just... <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I mean... <laughs> think about wizard and think about Titania. They are... Well, wizard is a fun character, but he's not a fucking winner. He has never been in on a plot where he won. No, that's true. But at the same time, that's because Wizard gets beat by Reed Richards. He doesn't get beat by a duck with an attitude problem. <laughs> like, I if suppose you pull, that's valid. All right, if, if you pull say... Wizard up against... Uh, all right, fucking Speedball. Who are you betting on? Uh, wizard. <laughs> if you put Wizard up against uh, Slapstick, the cartoon character. But the fact is, he's still... Lo- yes, okay, yeah, Slapstick will lose. Yes, yeah. I get it. All right, and Howard the Duck? Should Quack lose. Food. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sorry, like, oh, I'm, I'm a part-time scroll, part-time tattoo artist. But he really doesn't want to beat Howard. He wants to go somewhere he can go and be his normally elevated self. He doesn't want to have to punch down. You know what I'm saying? Well, you have to I punch mean, literally, down. Literally. He doesn't yeah, want like to punch down. Yeah, like he's a tiny guy. Like, you know. <laughs> Although the wizard is hardly the tallest, like he might look like Karnak, but you know he's <laughs> he's not he's not a, a man of fisticuffs. Uh, Masters but, of the universe is over. What will wow, we do? Wow, that thing is twenty nine years old. For God's sake! Fuck. So anyway, at the end of it all, coming through the Nexus of all realities are a female rocket and a female Howard. Man, we're going to get their story in number two. That was a little creepy looking. Kind of kooky. But enjoyable, right? You dug yeah, it. Yeah, no. I, uh, anytime Howard the Duck is in there, like, you know, my shit is on point. I'm like, oh, <laughs> talking ducks? I need to pay attention. <laughs> then, you got anything else you want? No? That's a good book. Sharknado 3. Oh, my God. <laughs> you put on Sharknado 3. Which starts with a Bond riff, which is, all right, a bit amusing. Oh, really? A double-bladed chainsaw? Get the fuck out of here. Oh, that's, that's a perfect subtitle for this thing. <laughs> Sharknado 3. Oh, hell no. <laughs> it's so fucking terrible. <laughs> Over in Miss Marvel 1, <laughs> Kamala is training with the Avengers, and she's fucking digging it. Uh... Till she goes home when she's exhausted from school and training and life. And in school, Bruno has gotten himself a new girl. Which is nice, because we knew there was never going to happen anything with Kamala. Now, uh, it really messes with Kamala, though, because she was like, er, wasn't I the one? Uh, yeah, I don't no. know. It's very teen angsty, but it's okay because it's it, handled so well. What well, it is, uh, I don't even think it's teen angsty, but I'll wait till you do the full thing. But I get because I really <laughs> want to get back to this. There's some general teen ridiculousness until they find uh, a real estate developer uh, starts using Kamala's image in ads without telling her she, he's doing it. So she finds crazy shit like security guards that are a bit too well armed and. Uh, a protest breaks out opposing Kamala herself because of the unbeknownst association. <laughs> and then Bruno tells the story of his new girl. It's a, it's a cute little, like, you know, the whole uh, fighting celebrity thing has been a little too done too often in Cap alone. Yeah. I feel like Cap fights that particular battle every two years, but <laughs> I love Miss Marvel, but the whole character jealousy thing I thought was so first off the yeah. coolest thing about this book is the fact that Mike is a realistically looking girl sure. in that she is overweight she's not Mary Jane Watson or Gwen <laughs> State like it's not some sort of John Romita hey you just hit the jackpot tiger She's a sweet, <laughs> likable girl who Bruno actually has things in common with and then grows fond of despite caring about. It's, a, it's, it's the most realistic relationship in comics in a long time <laughs> in five fucking pages. So kudos to that. But even better than that is the simple fact that Ms. Marvel makes fun of her weight. 
And I don't say that. Kind be- of, a little bit. Not kind of, as she absolutely does. Because it's, and she acknowledges a page later it was a shitty thing to do, but she's upset because she is a young girl and she reacts like a young girl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the piece that you have to follow. It's not, oh, she did this fucked up thing. It's, we all say fucked up things on occasion. <laughs> Shit sneaks out of you that you don't feel good about four seconds after you said it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've done it this episode. What the fuck? <laughs> not yet, but you will. Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, Dick, um, wait. Um. <laughs> See, I totally regret that. It was bad. But no. Thoroughly enjoyable. No, it's it's one of the best books out there. We rave about it to everybody. Like, if you're not buying Miss Marvel, I... I don't know why you read comics. Yeah, well, <laughs> I can see... Like, there is definitely... the To me, like, Astro City is the central point. Like, if you like comic books, everything about Astro City is going to appeal to you somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Miss Marvel... Like, if you like The Punisher, Miss Marvel is probably not your book. That's okay, too. Yeah. But this is... Phenomenal, and if you like the Punisher, there's no reason to assume that you won't like this because it's fucking good. <laughs> and I just I want people to read this. This is a book that I want don't want to go anywhere. Uh, G Willow Wilson is a excellent like I actually remember her name, which is fucking <laughs> kudos to you because the last name I memorized was John Byrne to give you an idea how often that happens. There you go. I I don't know how you could get uh, any more endorsement from that. That's it's enjoyable. Every page has something to like on it, and it's a great art style for the book. Lovely yeah, artist, totally is. Even though you argued with me about the fittingness of art and the t- attaching to it yesterday, well, because I it, it's something. <laughs> well, no, I I argued that our your and my older comic book fan prejudices sometimes get in the way of the fact that art can go almost anywhere with a book and still work these days. Things that we look at like this is too cartoony for this. Modern day people are like fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. It's cubism. Deal with it. So like, no, cubism is not acceptable. In- <laughs> See right there, you're so provincial in your thinking. Oh, we're back to the peasant thing. Thanks, Mister Red Cap. I do have a red cap fucking on. proletariat guy. I'm really more of a uh, <laughs> Steve Zuzu in the Life Aquatic. If you think about. It. <laughs> Little red knit cap. Little red knit cap. <laughs> you ain't even paying attention. Uh, no, so Iron Man 3, you are watching. I see you looking at Ann Coulter on that fucking movie. What? Yeah. I didn't notice that. I see Robert Klein. It was that hatchet-faced blonde. <laughs> <laughs> and Rick Fox, who broke up with your girl Eliza Dushku, so she's free to the world again. Yeah, uh, I suppose. Um, so in Iron Man 3... <laughs> <laughs> Tony gets defeated by Madame Mask of all people now that she's like super pumped up mystical girl um, and he goes to sulk and try again with his this new girl Amara uh, it, it, there's a very good talk that they have and they agree to keep dating although with caveats <laughs> well she has a lot less I love the fact when uh, she revealed that he uh she totally assumed that he took off because she didn't make out with him. Right, right. Man, it's a with Tony Stark, it's a fair assumption. But Bendis is doing a great job yet again. Like for whatever reason, Iron Man is the best book to stop and restart. <laughs> well, that and Thor. Like every time, like oh no, you can't top. Oh, maybe you can. Well, <laughs> perhaps you can. I think they're getting the timing just precisely right before something goes horribly wrong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know. I will say too, like they're getting better. Like they're, I don't understand why you can portray Iron Man as a likable, overly, you know, highly frustrating, likable character in his own book, <laughs> and then everywhere else it's like dick nozzle. <laughs> it's true, man. I used it, dick weasel and douche nozzle earlier, <laughs> so I've combined them into dick nozzle. It's an evolution of insults. If you pay attention to what I do, there's a pattern. Oh, is there? Uh huh. Yeah, I see that smug ass look. So, Hail Hydra. <laughs> that Just was awesome. Checking. That that amused the shit out of me. He had he had to be sure, man. Things I, were things were going pretty well. Did and you, in Tony Stark's life, that's an opportunity to make sure. It's was not, that necessary? Not it was kind of necessary. <laughs> well, let me ask you. So, did you like that better, or the uh, awesome facial hair, bros? 
Uh, high five. <laughs> awesome facial hair, bros. <laughs> that was the worst high five ever. <laughs> Speaking of which, Tony goes to Strange, checking what Mask may be doing with all these mystic artifacts. Tony tracks her down, and she's left a message... And there's suddenly lightsaber ninjas. There's, Which, uh, if, you know, if ninjas have to go up against Iron Man, lightsabers are really the only way they're going to be effective. I thought, <laughs> I thought the dialogue with Miss Mask, like when she wasn't raving at him, like on the phone when she's like, we have a weird history. And I don't understand why I'm drawn to you. I don't understand why you're drawn to me, but I know it's necessary. But know this, Tony. I'm going to kill you if you come near me again. Like, that's fucking... That was mad and mad. Like, the whole screaming, ranting psychopath didn't... I'm like, hmm. I love the back and forth. Uh, when he talked about buying the hotel and... Um, Is Ann Coulter going to die? Because I, I need to see that. Oh, oh. One, one, one death around her. Two death around her. That was Robert Klein, man. You can't kill him with a shark. Oh, why aren't they killing Ann Coulter? God damn. So, uh... Yeah, what did you think of the lightsaber ninjas? Uh, you know, I like the fact that other people are hunting her, and like that, hunting mystical items has its brings its own drama. I thought a lot of this was done quite well. Yeah. I love Bendis on this book again. I love the art. Super excited uh, for a rare thing for me to be like buy me Iron Man. I don't <laughs> usually do that. This time I did. <laughs> uh, such good stuff. So more good stuff. Over in Doctor Strange 2. <laughs> Strange's visitor is now diagnosed as having mind maggots. Yes, I saw them surfing down the stairs on paintings of presidents from the White House. Which is just so fucking wrong. Especially since it was fucking Lincoln and Washington. <laughs> well, you know, if you're going to surf, you pick the right president. And Coulter surfing on Lincoln's face? Not great. Not something I ever need to see again. So anyway, this poor chick has mind maggots. Who escaped through the house, by the way. Um, and Strange has some mystical problems. They wander the house, seeing neat things, until the uh, offensively organized library is <laughs> walked into. <laughs> offensively organized? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's, no, the that was hilarious was awesome. to me. This uh, this place is offensively organized. Wong makes dinner, and Strange eventually absorbs the magnets, um, and asks her to arrange his library. A mysterious other dimensional sorcerer Supreme shows up, and uh, he's looking for help, but he seems to be killed. No, there, it was again. Jason Aaron has a great take on this character. Another guy is constantly being. Portrayed as overly creepy is being done better here in his own book. Yeah. Uh, I loved how they portrayed Wong as like this mystic adventure uh, enjoys cooking, like not <laughs> subservient but not, you know, antagonistic to uh, Stephen either, which was nice. Right. But the best thing about this, but other than the fact that you had to say mind maggots out loud. <laughs> Was the moment where she's like, are you doing this to hit on me? And he's like, if you think my library is in trouble, you should see my romantic life. <laughs> like, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I'm so glad the Marvel books can have fun now. Or most of them, anyway. Because some of them get a little iffy on the fun front. Yes. So, no, but thoroughly enjoyable. A good characterization that I, I'm actually engaged with with Doctor Strange for once. That's so horrifyingly bad. That's beyond ridiculous. Beyond. Oh. And I think the effects are getting worse, actually. <laughs> They're totally getting worse. Look at that. Okay, that was kind of funny. Not amazing, but funny. I ain't even going to say what happened. There's a, <laughs> there's a bust in a shark mouth. And yeah, whatever. Just embrace your love of Sharknado. Yeah, no. There is nothing to embrace. Blu-ray uh, box set coming your way oh, for Christmas. Oh, I will crack those things in half and then jam them up your ass. <laughs> that would be uncomfortable. Yeah, that's the idea. So anyhow, so over in Amazing Spider-Man 3, <laughs> Zodiac 
of all things, uh, is on the prowl again as Pete opens the new Parker International Building, which is the Baxter Building, uh, when <laughs> when Johnny Storm finds out that he bought it. He confronts Pete uh, for some mildly serious indignation embodied by fighting. Because that's what you do when you're a hero and you're pissy at the, hero, the other hero. You fight him a little bit. Do, do you really want to see a comic book where Johnny Storm and... Peter Parker don't fight over the dumbest shit all the time. Uh, you know, yeah, dude. I've seen uh, even I think um, making fun of the Iwo Jima fucking monument was pushing it. Yeah, that was that is a bit far. That was Bo Derek. Oh my god. Wait, were you saying that Ann Coulter was Bo Derek the whole time? No, or- no, 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 no. There was a the janitor chick on the top of the stairwell with the vacuum cleaner fighting the shark. Uh uh-uh. That was Bo Derek. Uh, Tara Reed's back Oh my god um, Where the fuck was I <laughs> Oh yeah Embodied by fighting the Zodiac Takes down a helicarrier Oh my god When did they get that powerful And Pete introduces Johnny <coughs> Excuse me <clears throat> Pete introduces Johnny To uh, Harry Osborn That ought to be interesting I thought, again, the, I thought I enjoyed most of this slot was very well done. And if you think about it, the Zodiac always was that powerful. Like, the first off, the, if you go back to the Storanko stuff, that key is insanely powerful. It is. It really is. And then if you go back to, like, when the, uh, the Zodiac was 12 different crime bosses with all their resources and money. I don't actually remember that, but I believe you. Yeah, the Zodiac used to be... They were a big lame deal, but they were a big deal. <laughs> oh, wait. That's Bo Derek. Goddamn. That's Bo Derek. Anyway. Job. You figured out who Bo Derek is. Whatever. Uh, the Zodiac have attacked so that they can kill the imprisoned failure Leo. Pete and Johnny reconcile when Pete tells him he bought the building to preserve it, man. There's history there. There's important history of my good friend there, so I'm going to fucking save it, baby. Which is totally in character for Peter it Parker. It absolutely is. The ending's a bit weird, though, implying that Pete just walks into other countries and takes over their energy infrastructure without any kind of, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm here. Uh, and the dictator of Natua, or, yeah, that's what I wrote down, Natua, uh, calls Norman Osborne to kick Parker International out. Well, they just say Osborne. They don't say well, Norman. Eh. I'm just know. saying, there's enough weird shit in Spider-Man historically that... It could be any number of Osbournes. Actually, it could be Liz, now that I think of it. Uh, no, 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 it says Mr. Osborne. True, but... And at that time, uh, Pete, Johnny, and Harry are all having a drink. Any number of clones or weird shit. Well, yeah, that's true, too. The the uh, different the faces page, different covered timeline. up by bandages. Yeah. So, so who the fuck knows? The implication, of course, is Norman. Right. But but uh, no, that that kind of worries me a little bit. That a country would not be consulted when you know you know I've got a great idea for energy. I'm just gonna start doing things. Is that cool? Is that right? Okay. No that. that I'm getting past your your inability to really think about science there, Danny boy. But uh, come on, you, I, this is the biggest contrivance ever. That is deliberately not believable at all. Deliberately so. You can't just walk into a country and start doing things their government doesn't want you to do. You, you can't do that. Well, you can. Just usually you get you know beat up. Yeah, you get fucking shot is what happens. <laughs> Come on. But aside from that little bit of geopolitical what the fuck, it was good. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I enjoy the heck out of this. Love slot on Spider-Man. Uh, love the semi-successful Peter Parker waiting for it to fall horribly awry. <laughs> and it will. <laughs> so another fun book is next. Yes, I have turned a corner on this. I am fully behind it. <laughs> You're finally a Spider Woman fan again. I did not really. I just the uh, the hero porcupine is the best thing ever. 
<laughs> I may have to buy this just to have that. <laughs> Jess has been training, said Porcupine, um, supervising him so she can watch the streets while so he can watch the streets while she has mystery baby. She reluctantly gives up the motorcycle, and this, of course, pleases Carol, because Carol was like, don't do anything wrong to that fucking kid, man. Oh, and you. You, you, you need to be safe, too, but don't fuck with the kid. Uh, Sam tracks... No, wait, I skipped all over the place. Fucking <laughs> hell, man. She reluctantly gives up the motorcycle, and this pleases Carol, but Porcupine's training ends successfully, and there's a big maternity party, but... After some frustration, uh, Jess visits the alien doctors that Carol recommends. But then, the Skrulls show up. Of all the people that Jess never wanted to fucking see again in any number of dimensions or lifetimes, the Skrulls have to fucking show up. (laughs) When Skrulls attack, a Fox (laughs) reality special. But let me tell you, walking walking around that hospital and seeing the the sheer variety of aliens they cooked up, that amused me. I thought it was an incredibly well done I, issue. I had a good time with that book. I think they're doing quite well with the character of Spider Woman. The backup characters uh, they remove Porcupine and Yurik while still leaving them viable right, to go back right. to. Uh, they have things to do. They're not in limbo. They didn't just. Wander back off to a, you know a bad newspaper and the unemployment line. <laughs> and when the Porcupine book finally comes out, <sighs> you know I will not be shocked if they make a Porcupine book. I really don't know if I'll read it. <laughs> it'll totally. You'll be, I'll be buying it, so you'll be reading it. It'll totally depend on who the team is. Does not remotely matter. <laughs> that shit is coming home. Yeah, you do that. Um, over in the new Captain America number three, Carl Malice is back. Everybody remember who the hell he is? If you don't, then you've never read any good D-Man stories. Wait, no, there are no good D-Man yeah, stories. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say, when did, yeah. you've never thought that anything would D-Man it. You've thought that the page was soiled by having the presence of D-Man on the page. Well, you know, he did live in sewers. But that's also true. Anyway, so Malice is back, turning people into animal guys, whom were then abducted by the sons of the serpent. Right. Yeah, dude, I have no problem with Malice. I Here's my thing. Uh, who wrote this? Uh, this is still uh, uh, Nick Spencer. Okay. Uh, Nick Spencer officially became my favorite writer right now. Because of this issue, because he does something in this that nobody else. First off, it's a return of Cap Wolf, which is awesome. Second off, he had <laughs> no. It's the Cap Wolf was the dumbest thing ever, but the fact that Misty Knight was saving all these Cap Wolf puns for this, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> and that is true. I, I was amused by those. Just and, how and, frustrated <laughs> Falcon Cap is with all this <laughs> crap. Like when you see when you can legitimately draw a Wolf Man. Look perturbed. <laughs> not angry. Not I want to eat your face. Just like, oh, I don't believe another pun. Acuna does know what he's doing. <laughs> uh, awesome, awesome issue in that sense. <laughs> then, on top of that, you have Malice, who turns a guy into an iguana, who asks for his wife, and Malice is like, you're a fucking iguana. <laughs> She's not going to want, dude, I don't care how free she is with her sexuality. <laughs> She's not doing an iguana. <laughs> Deal with it. That shit is over. You know, Trouser Lizard is just a euphemism. Yes. You know that shit, right? But the best thing about this book, and the reason I love Spencer, is that he does something that used to happen all the time and nobody bothers with anymore. Is he takes three panels and he explains how Malice survived being eaten by Carnage. Yeah, yeah. And then turns that into new powers for Malice at the end. Sure, yeah. Hardly anybody When's the last time... Oh, that guy's dead. I'm just using him. Yeah, yeah. There's there's no excuse for bringing people back anymore. And when they on the rare occasion that they bother saying so, it's kind of Mickey Mouse horse shit. Right. <laughs> oh, that was my sister. Oh, really? No. Uh, at any rate, the New Serpent Society, the New Serpent Society, which is different from the Sons of the Serpent, just so you know. 
are using Malice's tech. Yeah, but here's the thing. Like, you had to love that. I mean, I know your fondness for this. Like, oh, I'm happy to as, see the Serpent Society As many Society bad back. B-villains as I love, the Serpent <laughs> Society is definitely a U one. <laughs> but they're using Malice's tech to create model, like, transforming models for weird ad campaigns? <laughs> like, well, I'm sorry, all, what? They're all corporate now. Wait till, you, wait till you see the shit that is waiting for you in issue five. Oh, was that a wrestler chick? I have no idea who that is. Well, she had a mask and she did a upper rope flip jump to kill a shark, so I was figuring. So, no, this was a very enjoyable one. I'm not real certain about four. Five was okay, but uh, we'll see. I loved everything about it. Like, I don't love um, Falcon Cap. I'm tired of Cap not being Cap. I want that to stop. I've been very clear about that. <laughs> but again, I love the cover. I love the, the jokey level. I like a lot of what's happening in this book so far. Good. I'll keep it around then. So, which brings us to the brand spanking new Avengers volume pie uh, that is really irritating me. We will avenge you! But it's Mark Wade, so there's no way I wasn't going to get this. Actually, we deba- you debated it. You're, you're so tired of revamps that you did debate it, to be fair. No, I It wasn't did. a hard sell, but... I even skipped uh, two and three and then got four and five because I remembered it was Mark Wade. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not, you know, the, one of the six other groups that have really terrible lineups. Anyway, so this opens up with Sam saving some people on a bridge and he has to decide... Whom to buy Girl Scout cookies from? That was hysterical. Which is tough and funny because there's this huge crowd of people and there's a very diverse lineup of Girl Scouts there. And he's got like what five bucks? Five bucks. You can buy one box. (laughs) He can only buy one box. He's got to figure out who to get it from. And his choice is going to be out there forever. But I love that. I thought that, like, that's such a real fucked up thing. It really is. And you got people in the crowd going, oh, of course he's going to get it from that one. Come on. He's Sam fucking Wilson. And we all know what that means. He's a good man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, somewhere along the line, someone someone's a chick Oh, out. I forgot, actually, the moment in um, the Cap Wolf. I almost forgot. Yeah. The part where he's flying as Cap Wolf. And the person on the ground is like, okay, I didn't mind him, but this is ridiculous. That shit was amazing. Like, fine, you take over for Cap, okay. Suddenly you're a wolf, and you can fly? I don't know about this. I'm not voting for that for my Captain America. <laughs> someone someone's your Chitauri and as, as they're talking, and they discover that Miles Morales is eavesdropping. And he escapes... And Cap and Tony show up to help, but the Chitauri beats them. And there's a backup story where Kamala and Nova fight giant monsters and argue. And, and flirt very badly. And yeah, and they just, they just barely kind of flirt. Kind of well, they, Nova tries. Nova tries because he doesn't know why she thinks he's a, he's a jerk. And, but she's like, I'm trying to handle things and you're screwing it up. But she's shocked and refuses to acknowledge what a trust move he makes as he reveals his identity to well, it. Well, I thought it was really cute. I liked it. I, I thought the fact that Nova was impressed by her and liked her and wanted to impress her, but sure. she's so like she's so much more mature. Like this is the perfect <laughs> analogy here. She's so much more mature for her age than he is <laughs> that it's he's like, why are you punching this thing? And you've broken its teeth. It's just a poor, innocent, giant, monstrous animal. Plus, you ruined this local landmark. He's like, wait, what? The- like in the eighties, fucking new comic book characters. Yeah, nobody ever said that shit to fucking Supreme. Like you ruined the Krispy Kreme. Fuck you. Nightmash didn't deal with this shit. You ruined the Krispy Kreme. Fuck you. And then, like, he pulls the ultimate hero trust move way too soon. Like, I thought it was so sweet and endearing. Like, and he's sitting there. Everything he says, he sounds like an ass, and he knows it. And he yeah, can't but persist. he can't help it because he's 15. Exactly. We've all been there, and certainly at late, 
You and I did shit like that well uh, after 15. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it was, it was uh, still do I did oh, it last well, that wasn't week. Funny. Yeah, Let me know. try. Nope, that's not funny. Let okay. me try. Uh, Why don't I just go home? Just fucking shoot me, miss. <laughs> Seriously, shoot me in the goddamn face. <laughs> Oh, look, Tara Reed's pulling a Luke Skywalker. She got a mechanical hand with a long black opera glove. Makeup is still bad, though. That's the face. Tara Reed. Oh. <laughs> Anyhow. We're closing in. We're going to get some other stuff done later. What do you but got? We're closing in. No, so are you excited by this? The Avengers? Which, yeah. Uh, I don't know if excited is, is quite the word just Can I yet, see the cover? But I am reading it, and I do like it so far. I enjoyed it. My one thing, uh, and it's sad because I really like Miss Marvel. I don't care about no, But this is an, this seems like a team of popular... Like, the cover informs us that the team is going to be Female Thor, Falcon Cap, yeah. Iron Man, Nova... Yeah. The new Vision, yeah. Ms. Marvel, and the new Spider-Man. So far, so good. It just, it seems like a top 40, like, who's the most popular people we have? Let's put them... Yeah, but it's also, um, we're the new guys, let's have a chance. I suppose there's some of that, too. I just, my favorite Avengers teams are not necessarily made up of, the, of, like, six most popular characters you can throw together. Yeah, but that that rot- the the roster rotates at such a rapid rate that I mean, this no, is, it, not anymore. This is now un- they just do a new book. Well, that's true too. When's the last time somebody left the Avengers? Uh, never. They just changed the entire fucking creative team and put a new number one on it. Yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> well, whatever. We're closing in, so I guess we gotta got uh, gotta talk about uh, Hawkeye vol- uh, number one, volume ninety two. Assholes. <laughs> uh, for a number one, this is fine. Uh, if this goes on six, eight episodes, the issues this way, I'm not going to be happy with this whole splitting present and future thing. Well, you liked okay. it when they were splitting Just, present and past. Well, that's because it's Even though history. it went nowhere. Well, it's history. It informed the characters. It's, it's something new about the characters that makes them fuller, more likable, or not believable, but not acceptable is not right either. Um, you, you get a better appreciation of where the character's coming from. Uh, a couple of old assholes running around shooting arrows, who gives a shit? You know, they've had, they're going to have this feud forever, who knows when it's going to fucking end. And you, you just know that Kate is going to tell hawk the fuck off and she's gonna go do her own thing and he's gonna be regretful for 30 fucking years so let's just have a straight story okay one of the downsides to this new evolved Hawkeye which is to be fair the only Hawkeye that you and I have enjoyed yeah <laughs> oh, does she have a robotic chainsaw hand uh, I didn't see but she does have a, a robotic oh my god it is a chainsaw hand why are chainsaws the only thing that can kill sharks? They're not. I mean, <laughs> the pizza ovens. Oh, yeah. Anyway. What? what but, you, uh, you force me into these things. You have a captive audience, and then I have to just deal, and I want to kill you for it. That, that hurts me. It should. But I like the fact that Hawkeye, you know, thinks about things more, or is, you know, has more feelings... But the Hawkeye Kate dynamic is so dysfunctional at this point. Oh, completely, completely. And they're both like it's easy to forget, like because you're so used to Hawkeye being a raging asshat. <laughs> but Kate is equally unlikable in how she deals with things. They're both stubborn. They're both opinionated, and they clash about like these people fight over ice cream toppings for twenty five <laughs> minutes. It's true. Though. But the, is that is that the kind of dynamic you're going to want to read for 36 issues? No, it's not. Like uh, a little antagonism is good. Yeah, for a but comic it's, book. it's been constant lately, and kind of like. Well, it's oh, always been like as long as they've been together, they've been fighting one way or another. Yeah, but th- there have been degrees, and she's just so strident about the fallout of these kids, and Hawk is just like, look, eventually you got to. 
call something even, and these kids are such a huge danger that what are we going to do about it? Well, I don't want to be a repetitive dick, but this is <laughs> this is very mindful of the whole Miss Marvel. Sometimes you can't save kittens. Yeah. Except that was done with subtlety and humor and grace, and this is a big clump and pile of oh my god these psychic children never had a chance at life while they were busy killing hydra agents <laughs> it's yeah i i know what you're saying he does and lemire does an incredible job i think lemire is currently if, if you remove bun and gillen lemire is your favorite comic book writer out there like newer yeah yeah those two trump him but he has rapidly jumped up considerably, so I don't want to at all oh, criticize sure. the dude. But this just like this storyline is just not subtle in comparison. No, not by a long shot. And then he does these cool other things. Oh my God, is that Jared? Yes, it was. Dude, child molesting, <laughs> shark eating, so and so. Oh boy. So things have been tense between these guys for a long time. And in the future storyline, she's made quite an organization of the Hawkeyes. That was horrible. That was, you know, come on, just be a Hawkeye. Now, now, Kate preempts a bust of Hammerhead, which gets Clint angry, and they break the partnership. In the future, they have to go after the fucking Mandarin, which was just a waste because nothing happened with him. Dude, well, whatever. It's the last splash page, so that's fine. As he has the kids... That fucked everything in the first fucking place. But here's my thing. Like, you're a bigger comic book fan than I am. <laughs> you, there are guys that we both like. There are guys that we like equally. You're not close to the Mandarin fan that I am, and you're a huge <laughs> fucking Mandarin fan. Would you agree with that sentence? Yes. So, we, I am a super obsessive Mandarin fan. So, when you give me the Mandarin, he probably shouldn't look like a fucking three-day orgy mix of Doctor Who and the prankster in a Rubik's Cube tie. All right, maybe that's an excessive... Oh, no, you're right. Yeah. Oh, he... I am 100% right. And not only that, but Perez... Well, actually, this is 30 years later, so yeah, he would be pretty damned ancient. Yes, that oh. part was fine. Well, I mean, let's we can blame his fashion sense on his senility. Come on, dude. <laughs> Like, maybe you forgot it, but when you first looked at it, you're like, Mandarin? Really? No, I didn't forget it. I was just waiting for you oh, to say it. Oh, yeah, dude. Because uh, that was pretty, uh, really, white suit after November? I mean... <laughs> after Labor Day, not... No. Whatever. Whatever. You know, you, uh, you had to correct me. Nobody was going to say anything about that. Nobody was going to hear it. Nobody listens to us. True. Fucker. Um... We so, podcast yeah. to the world, and the world turns the light off and leaves us out in the cold. Pretty much, yeah. Like, that's not happened before. We're like barn cats to these people. <laughs> it's like, are you killing mice? No, then shut the fuck up, cat. <laughs> but we're meowing, and we're adorable. Shut up, barn cat. <laughs> I'm not making that our title. <laughs> shut up, barn cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's damn sure going to be a quote, though. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Let's finish up with the really, 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 really good. That is not how you wear that hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. There. <laughs> it really is. Um, the always enjoyable Cat White, number three. Dude, Tim Sale was made to draw... The Red Skull. Oh, Holy so was. fuck. Oh, my God. So good. Everything that you ever thought the Red Skull should be are in these panels right here. It's amazing. So they're in Paris. The Commandos, Cap, and the Resistance, and they're all in the sewers. And Marilyn, the Resistance gal, has to stop um, Cap from assaulting Skull during a speech, thereby endangering the mission. I can totally see it, and I can kind of half not see it. Because Cap, it's early, early in his career, but he should be a little more mindful of there's a point to being out there and not just killing the skull. Or actually apprehending the skull. You know. Because generally speaking, except for the war, Cap don't kill. Right? In the war, well, yeah, I mean, only in old school Cap in the war did he kill. Like... Even now, it's pretty much hit with shield, hit with shield. Hence the whole, you know, let's tie up these Nazis. Right. 
So, uh, where was it? Endangering the mission. Um, they leave the sewers for a safe house where Meraline and Cap talk about Cap not realizing just how important uh, the resistance role is to them. And, you know, he probably can't really grasp I it. I see. I think that this, I'm going to uh, not disagree with you because you're not making a point so much as I'm going to say that the problem is not so much that Cap doesn't appreciate. Cap is more than happy to have anybody fight at his side. The problem is that she doesn't recognize that Cap is doing this because it's the right thing to do, not because, oh, we're Americans, therefore we have to do it. Uh, like, she's not prescribing Cap his actual motives, which is fine because who does? Like, oh, Americans <laughs> are coming to take over. Yeah, well, you know, trope, trope, trope. <laughs> but Cap is like, let's all do our part and end this shit together. You right. have as much right to shoot Nazis as I do, and I would never take that away from you. <laughs> but she still feels that he doesn't feel that need to, to resist at, at a visceral level because nothing's happened to his country except for Hawaii. There's no invasion. There's no occupation. Yeah, you were attacked and a bunch of people died, but no other American soil has been touched by an enemy. So she's coming at it like, this is my home, motherfucker. No, and then... You're and here to help, but this is where I live. <laughs> that is true. Like, until you actually um, get invaded, can you ever really understand that? Probably not. No, but, you know, he doesn't really have to, and that's where she's getting a little too emotional about it. He needs to accomplish the mission, which ends with the liberation of France and therefore the accomplishment of her own mission. Yeah, you're like, okay, fine. I may not um, <coughs> care as much about France as you do, but I can sure shit hate Nazis. There like, you go. Like, that's not challenging. We got common ground. <laughs> Say what you will, I am totally anti-Nazi. Right, right. And But during all this, and I was kind of worried about it. Yeah, I saw that. It was terrible. Um during all this, Bucky is somehow weirdly losing faith in Cap. And I didn't quite grasp why that would be. Because there's always has to be conflict. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's already having conflict with Marilyn. So, no, um, no. The, Bucky never feels like he's being taken seriously as Cap's partner. Yeah. And every now and then, Cap has to do something to support that. All right. However small... It seems like it's pushing it for this environment. Well, I mean, you know, at, in part because it's not subtle, but more importantly because you've already seen this a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. But, of course, this is set in the fort. Like, you're going to see things you've already seen. That's the whole point. Yeah, realistically, this would be the first time right. we've seen Right, that's the way you got to so, remember. Yeah, yeah. So they all end up getting betrayed to Strucker. And by a French guy. By shock French of all guy. shocks. Oddly enough... Can you say, come on in, monsieur? The bush. You can have the country. It's all right. It's only the dairy country. <laughs> I don't know. It's only the French uh, Riviera. We don't like that place. <laughs> <laughs> Buck gets captured trying to attack the skull. And we end the book. So... I can't wait. Uh, yeah, like, do, do I think the Cap giving Bucky a black eye by accident was a little over, you know, heavy-handed? Yes, a Teeny little. bit, yeah. But just the core of all these characters is so... The great thing about Loeb as a writer is the broad... Like, he does a lot of subtle things really well, but the broad understanding of the characters. And I include in that every single howler <laughs> yeah, each each got a little bit that was very clearly them. Yeah, the personality of all of them is on point. It, it wasn't understanding... extensive by any means, but it was clear. Yep. And then on top of that, the depth of, like, Tim Sale's just ability. Like, he's so masterful. When that dude draws something, that shit looks good. You're like, hey, oh, yeah. No. If you ask that guy to draw poop, you're going like, to be like, dang, I'm putting this up on the wall. Like, I don't want a picture of poop. Oh, that is a good... Like, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck him, Sale. Please don't draw poop again. Like, <laughs> oh, man, I don't want a poop print. That's fucking awkward. <laughs> poop print. 
That's fucking funny. And I think that's a great place to end the episode. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get us out of here? Bless you, fucker! Us. And away. The Mean Geek is recorded live at the Reverend Mad Duck's apartment whenever the hell we can get to it. Find us on Facebook, Stitcher, Twitter under at the Meaner Geek. Subscribe to us through RSS. Or we can be located at our own site, www.themeangeek.com. And most importantly of all, you can find us as a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network. Email us directly at themeanergeek at gmail.com. Can I drink now? You may. <laughs>